For the first time in 50 years, America is starting its journey back to the moon. Artemis 1 will launch tomorrow. Despite recent lightning strikes at that launch pad, CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry has more on plans for the 42-day unmanned flight. NASA officials confirmed five lightning strikes hit the 600-foot tower surrounding the Artemis rocket Saturday. But the strikes were not powerful enough to cause any major issues. We have a threshold that we look at to see uh, what the magnitude of these strikes are, and we did not meet that criteria to have to do intensive or invasive uh, type of retest. Preparations for the unmanned flight to the moon are moving forward as planned. Fueling is scheduled to begin late Sunday, and NASA officials say they're keeping a sharp eye out for hydrogen leaks that caused issues in two countdown tests. We've done our best to um, mitigate all of the concerns with those. Storms have been hitting parts of the Space Coast, but forecasters say there's an 80% chance the weather will be perfect for a Monday morning launch. The 322-foot rocket is the most powerful NASA ever built. On this trip, it will power a crew capsule with three test mannequins into a distant lunar orbit, reaching 40,000 miles beyond the moon. 42 days later, it'll splash down in the Pacific. It comes half a century after NASA's Apollo program landed 12 astronauts on the moon. On CBS Face the Nation, astronaut Kate Rubin says this moon mission is very different. The first part of this program is really to establish a sustainable lunar presence on the, on the lunar surface and then both in orbit around the moon. This is helping us get ready for Mars. If the test flight goes well, astronauts could return to lunar orbit as early as 2024 and a moon landing could follow. Skyler Henry, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. And you can watch the launch in a CBS News special report tomorrow at 8.30 right here on CBS 3.